last video we were introduced to the concept of stock characters, that is stereotypical characters that an audience could identify on site and immediately know who that character was and what their role in the story was supposed to be. At the tail end of that video, I mentioned that even though there were hundreds of professional Commedia troops wandering around all over Europe, that most of them still relied on the same basic stable of stock characters. What we're going to be looking at in this video are just a few of the more popular and well-known Commedia characters. There were, of course, many others than just the five we're going to talk about here, but generally speaking, these were the ones that were the most often used in one form or another. As we take a look at each example, something to keep an eye on are the specifics in each character's costume. One of the fastest and most reliable ways for an audience to identify a stock character is by the costume they wear. Think back to the slide that we looked at on stock characters from a high school movie. You know who the jock is because of the letterman jacket or the jersey that he wears. You know who the nerd is because of the big glasses. Things like that. So things are used as a visual shorthand to help the audience identify a character right off. And the same was true in Commedia. Each character has a specific costume or prop and usually a specific color to help the audience immediately identify them. So the first character we're going to take a look at is this gentleman, Pantalone, and his characteristics were he was a lecherous, miserly old man. So if you've ever seen A Christmas Carol, he is essentially Ebenezer Scrooge version 1.0. He was a curmudgeonly man. All he cared about was money. He would sell his own mother if it meant he would get a few extra coppers. The other defining characteristic, as it says there, he was lecherous, meaning he loved the ladies. So he was often portrayed as either a widower or a single man and was always chasing around after the women much, much younger than him. You can look at his costume and see the distinguishing characteristics there. His signature colors were red and black, primarily red, known for the red doublet and the very tight red trousers, so almost making him look like the devil. Next up we have this gentleman, Doctore, and this guy filled a multitude of roles within a Commedia performance. Primarily, he was there to be a parody of well-educated men. Doctors, lawyers, they never quite specified what his field of study was. He could be whatever the scenario needed him to be. But the point was he was somebody who ordinarily would be seen as very intelligent and very well spoken, but in fact he was an idiot and would just kind of keep talking and talking and talking and talking even when he had nothing to say to make himself sound more intelligent, often using large words or something of that nature out of context. You can see from the image, his primary color is, of course, black. So it could be, you know, like a judge's robe or, you know, even then the gowns that people would wear in a college or university setting were still black. So it automatically made that connection to the audience. If you can see his face, now we're going to talk about the masks that they're wearing a little later on. But look at his face and look at the cheeks of the character. Oftentimes his cheeks would be painted red to give him that look of being flushed. You can see the character has kind of a belly on him so he was always seen as a somewhat portly fellow so this would mean you'd either have a heavier actor or they would comically pad the costume with you know a pillow or something. That whole idea of a learned man being very well fed and therefore very out of weight. So there was some more bits of physical comedy they could use him for. Next, we would have this gentleman, Capitano, and his characteristic was he was a cowardly braggart soldier. So the character was someone who had achieved great success 
and high standing in some form of military operation, but in fact, he was a coward. If anybody has ever seen the show Futurama, he was kind of the model for the character of Zap Brannigan. You'll notice that his costume, a couple things about his costume. First of all, notice that the primary color is yellow, yellow and red, or sometimes just plain yellow or yellow and blue. But yellow was always the primary color, because as we know, yellow is the color of cowardice. It's what we equate with cowardice, the yellow belly, or we say someone has a yellow streak running down their back, it means they're a coward. So, hence, that is why his costume always had that as one of its bases. You'll notice in this photo also some fairly exaggerated elements to his outfit. Notice the really huge ruff around his neck. Notice the really large feathers in his hat. Notice the overly long sword sticking out the back. These were all things that made him this source of great amusement. He had overly large elements of his costume because things like that, the rough, the feather in the hat, those were signs of wealth and respect back in the day. So to have one that was so overly large, so comically huge, was again mocking those higher ups in society. This next one a lot of you will probably have heard of in a different context. This character is called a Harlequin and if the first thing that jumps into your mind is the Batman character Harley Quinn this is where her name comes from. So the Harlequin character was a sly servant. This was an archetype that is going to continue even into the Shakespeare times. The servant who is actually wiser than the master. And the Harlequin would usually be the servant of someone like Pantalone and while Pantalone is attempting to make his various money-making schemes, the Harlequin character would be running around behind him, undermining him, or mocking him, or outwardly trying to defy him. The Harlequin character, as you can see from the illustration, and again, if you think back to the original costume of the comic book character Harley Quinn, what signifies them is the diamond-shaped jumpsuit. So the Harlequin character would always have diamond patterns on their suit, and the diamonds would be in multiple colors. So there was rarely kind of one primary diamond color. It was all over. Last ones we're going to touch on are these two folks, the young lovers. So a young man and a young woman, and again, actually being played by a woman, so somewhat revolutionary for the time. Now, these two were not as outwardly crazy as all of the other characters. If you look back at the other slides, the other characters that we're looking at are very cartoonish. They're very large, they have big personalities and big personality traits. The young lovers were the most true-to-life characters in a Commedia performance because they were the ones whose connection was what was driving the story. Almost all of the Commedia scenarios revolved around a set of young lovers who were trying to get together, but for some reason or another they were being blocked. So these characters were there to move the story along. They were supposed to be the emotional connection for the audience. So hence they didn't really have the big extravagant props or the extremely distinguishing costume. You can see here that they're dressed comparatively fairly conservatively. You know, they're not, nothing is really exaggerated. Also take note that all of the characters we have previously looked at, they were all wearing masks and we're going to have a look at some actual Commedia masks in the next video. But the young lovers are not wearing masks. They were the only characters in the Commedia who didn't wear them. And again, this was to give the audience something to connect to. Their love was supposed to be true and pure and wonderful, and the audience was meant to sympathize with them. So those are the major players in any Commedia performance. Now again, 
there were multitudes of different variations on these characters and there are others that we are just not going to have the time to get into here but those were the five primary characters that you found in just about every commedia performance most of the scenarios, and we discussed this a little bit as we were discussing the characters, but again, the basic plot of most of these stories would be the young lovers attempting to get together. More often than not, the young lady would be the daughter of Pantalone, and Pantalone is plotting to sell her, basically, sell her into marriage to someone like Doctore you know, a foolish doctor or lawyer, someone that Pantalone believes is going to make a lot of money and therefore he can leech money off of this guy through his daughter. And the Harlequin character going behind Pantalone's back and sabotaging the whole thing to get the two young lovers together. We're going to see plots like this one reimagined and reinterpreted throughout history. The French playwright Moliere, who we will talk about later, would use Commedia plots and Commedia stock characters a lot in his work, and we're going to see some of these characters pop up in things like the works of Shakespeare.